How's it going, guys? I wanted to take a few minutes tonight in this video to talk with you all about something that has been in the news recently. And I'm sure that many of you all are aware of what happened in Minnesota. I'm actually going to show you a video of the police executing a no-knock warrant. And uh, what I want to do is basically show you that video and then come back and talk about it. And I know there's been others that have done uh, videos on this since the incident happened. And I deliberately wanted to just take a step back, let more of the facts come out. And once those facts come out, take some time to actually talk about what has happened and some of the things that I think about it. So first off, uh, what I want to do is actually show you the video clip. And what I've got here is basically I have got the uh, news story up from USA Today. So what we're going to do is play this video and uh, then come back and talk a little bit about it. So here we go. You can see from the Minneapolis Police Department uh, what they did. You can see here officers actually went in. They had a key to the room. Okay. They were executing a no-knock warrant. And the no-knock warrant was on a, it was for a homicide suspect. The individual that was in the apartment that was in, uh, that got, uh, unfortunately, that lost their life was not the person they were looking for. Uh, the person in the video did have a firearm legally. Uh, it was a legally owned firearm. And, uh, you know, they were in there in, in the room in the apartment asleep on the couch. The police came in with a no-knock warrant and ended up shooting that individual. Now, there is, uh, had been calls for quite some time uh, over ending no-knock warrants. And I'm going to have to say that there are very limited circumstances where I think a no-knock warrant should be used. And in my opinion, I think that the only time a no-knock warrant should be used is in the event of the life of a potential victim. Uh, you know, cases of kidnapping, things like that. Cases of, uh, you know, threats against others. Now, I know that there's going to be some that can easily say that the reason that these no-knock warrants are done are for the protection of the police. And in some ways, I can understand some of that. However, what we are getting into, unfortunately, especially in recent decades, is shifting the burden of safety uh, onto the public. Uh, I should say shifting the risk more onto the public than we are onto law enforcement. Uh, I, I do think that there are things that need to be done, that there are steps that need to be taken to help ensure officer safety. But I think what we are seeing now is in many cases, uh, what can only be classified as an overreach. Uh, you know, we live in a society where the ultimate legal philosophy is supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. And what we are seeing now is a shifting of that, in my opinion. I think that with the expansion, in many cases, of the um, just some of the protections that law enforcement have, the qualified immunity clause and no-knock warrants and things like that, we're basically shifting more of the risk onto the general public. And this is the perfect example of why that is wrong. Uh, for, you know, no one makes someone become a police officer. 
It is an extremely stressful job. I had a friend of mine who was recently uh, sworn in as a deputy in a uh, county near me. And so, you know, I have friends in law enforcement. I know that their job is difficult. I hear the stories. You know, I know these guys. Literally, I've had some of them sitting on the couch back here behind me here in my house. So I can completely understand that there needs to be steps taken to try to ensure officer safety. However, there is a line that I think we're crossing. We're crossing to the point where we're putting too much risk onto the general public and tragedies are happening as a result. Uh, in many ways, we're seeing abuses, you know, blatant abuses in some places uh, because of actions of a select few. And, and the thing is, with all of the law enforcement interactions daily, we only hear about the bad ones. Um, you know, everybody hates getting pulled over. You know, everybody hates having to deal with a ticket or something like that. But there are a lot of interactions with law enforcement that we just don't hear about. They go very well. There's a lot of heroic actions taken by the uh, many in the law enforcement law enforcement community. Uh, there is a focus on those that do wrong because of the fact that a police officer that does wrong can have a dramatic impact on the life of an innocent civilian. In this case, in Minnesota, uh, the actions of the police actually ended the life of someone who was innocent. Uh, of course, we do not know what the final outcome of this is going to be as far as what is done, if anything. Uh, I, I personally think that it will be a case that becomes political, politically charged, and there may or may not be anything that happens. But at the same time, this is why I disagree with these no-knock warrants. I think that they are used too much. Uh, do I think that more criminals would be able to get away if a no-knock warrant was not used? Yes. I think that there are cases where you have people that are drug dealers and things like that. They would have a brief period of time to hide evidence or whatever as evidence that could be used to convict them in a court of law. But at the same time, when we weigh uh, that versus someone literally potentially losing their life, an innocent person losing their life, I think that we need to err on protection of the innocent. I think that we need to err on uh, preserving life. Uh, now, of course, someone could legitimately say and ask the question, does that include law enforcement? Yes. However, we have to remember at the same time the burden does not need to be on the private citizen. The greater burden is to be on the state. Okay, It is the state's resp responsibility to prove guilt. It is the state's responsibility to take those greater risks. Okay, Again, no one forces anyone to go into law enforcement. And those risks come with the job. That is a big part of it. And I think that it is uh, tragic what happened. Very tragic. An innocent person lost their life. Um, I think that in cases where private citizens own firearms, that really depends on the area where you live. Around me, in this area, it's a very gun-friendly area. Uh, for you liberals out there who may think about moving here, there's, you know, real big monsters that like eating left-wing liberal people that, you know, want to take all of our rights. Anyways, don't move here. The challenge comes in some other places. There's other places, other parts of this country to where firearms are not as prominent. They're not as socially accepted um is what they are around me and, and there again guys it's not just around me i've been to other parts of this country to where it, it's kind of this, very much the same very accepted it's very common to see someone carrying a firearm openly or concealed so i mean it's just very common around here uh, other areas is not 
And when we see interactions of law enforcement in some of these other areas, there is an unfortunate panic in some of them. Uh, just because someone has a firearm does not justify some of the tactics, some of the abuses that have happened to people simply for being in possession of a legally owned firearm. A criminal is someone that is going to harm others. However, a private citizen that has a firearm is not necessarily a criminal. And we need to recognize that citizens have a right to own firearms and they should not be literally shot just for merely possessing a firearm, uh, which is part of what this case was. Now, it, it, in some ways, it's understandable that uh, the law enforcement, they go, they're going in for a homicide case. All they see is a guy asleep on the couch. And he does have a gun in his hand. They open fire. Uh, it, it's clear from the video that the firearm was not pointed at them. Uh, but, you know, the stress of that job, the stress of that moment, uh, I think could have been avoided if there was not a no knock warrant used. Think about it, guys. Now, I know. For me, if, if any of you guys have watched my videos for any length of time, you know that I'm someone that is a big proponent of having a firearm on you regularly. Uh, in here in my house, in my own home right now, I have a firearm on me. And if I was in a situation like that, and this is one of those cases that I try to put myself in this position because I've literally been in this position. If I was asleep on my couch and someone crept into my house, if they were able to open my door and get into my house, wake me up like that guy literally kicking the couch or whatever, you know, I would have reacted the same way. And I think many of us would have. You know, I would have reached for my firearm. firearm. I would have thought that, hey, I'm under attack. I don't know what's going on. Who are these people that are literally standing over me? So these types of actions, in my opinion, are avoidable. I think that uh, if they had just used a regular warrant, which I can certainly understand uh, having a time limit, I can certainly understand only giving a set amount of time before you go in there when you're trying to serve a warrant like that. But at the same time, if this was a case where they had just knocked on the door or whatever and had woken him up, announced who they were, I really think that it could have ended differently. I, I think that the individual that was shot uh, would still be living. And the suspect, which they did finally arrest, uh, would be the one that's in jail. Uh, and the other gentleman, unfortunately, would hopefully still be alive. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. So, and guys, it's kind of getting just a little bit of rambling on this. And I would like to know your thoughts on it. Again, I wanted to slow down. I wanted to try to see both sides. I am not going to flat out defend the police in this instance. I think that they did wrong. I do not think they should have used a no-knock warrant in this situation. Uh, you know, there again, the, the burden of the risk, the risk needs to be on the state, uh, per se, on the police. I'll just have to say it. You know, that's just the reality. That's just my views of it. Guys, I would like to know your thoughts on it as well. You know, let me know down in the comments below, especially any of you guys out there that are in law enforcement. I know some of you guys out there uh, that watch these videos are in law enforcement. I'd like to know your thoughts on it. Uh, it's a bad situation. Uh, it is a very bad situation, but it is one that I think could be avoided if we would get rid of these no knock warrants, except for in cases where they're trying to save life of a victim, you know, a kidnapped child or anyone that's been kidnapped or is being held hostage or, uh, you know, it, it's just a bad situation, guys. But I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Be sure to like the video. Be sure to share the video. Also, be sure to check out all the links down below. Uh, you can pick up some of our T-shirts, anything, any of those shirts that you buy goes to help support what we do here. Guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to visit my website at boomsticktactical.com and we'll see you next time.